so welcome back in the previous previous lecture i, to, I asked you why this air foil creates this region of high pressure and low pressure region so there are two main contenders here the first one is bernoulli's equation and the next one is newton third law of motion so what bernoulli's equation says that you must have written in your junior classes also so this says that the uh, pressure energy plus the kinetic energy per unit volume plus potential energy per unit volume remains constant along a streamline so this is generally an energy conservation equation in fluid flow all right so uh, how does this explain the lift component it says that um, if we take if we neglect the h for uh, our purposes because the difference in height is not very much so this says that uh, pressure increases at the expense of velocity this is the uh, statement of bernoulli's equation so that means that if pressure increases velocity has to decrease and if pressure decreases velocity has to increase so how does this explain the lift okay so here uh, i have told you that uh, if an air particle moves around the top surface of the the airfoil and one uh, air particle which moves in the down surface of the airfoil so uh, bernoulli's equation the first assumption made is that uh, these two air particles reach the end of the airfoil at the same time okay at the same time so what happens because is that uh, as the air as the air particle at the top surface has to cover a larger distance in the same time so this speed up so this will speed up here and this time it would not speed up or even decelerate i can't show you here but this will decelerate and this one speed ups so when this speeds up according to bernoulli's principle uh, as velocity increases pressure has to decrease so this region is a low pressure region and this region since it decelerates this creates a pressure of high uh, high pressure region so velocity decreases and high pressure increases so this is the animated gif which shows the air stream very well so see uh, it said that uh, here the air particle speeds up here the air particle slows down so this creates a high pressure uh, sorry low pressure region and this creates a high pressure region this difference in pressure creates a lift this is the bernoulli's equation statement now let us look at our second candidate this is newton's third law of motion very basic you have been studying this action reaction pair from your very childhood this is newton's second law and newton's third law says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction how does this explains the lifting force it states that uh, the air air stream was moving in a straight line it was moving in a straight line uh, if the air foil was not present it moves in a straight line so what the air foil does is that uh, the air stream was moving in a straight line because of this air foil it curves along uh, along the air foil and it moves in a downward direction at the end it moves in a downward direction so initially it was moving in the straight line and now it is moving in a downward direction so basically what we are doing with the air foil is that we are down washing the air stream air particle is downwards uh, down wash in the downward direction so what happens uh, because of that uh, so we exert a force on force on the air particle to move down and as an reaction force the air particle will pushes this uh, air foil in the front direction in the upward direction that creates it so this was how uh, newton third law of motion states that see it was moving in this direction initially and now it is being down washed so that down wash of air particle creates a reaction force in the front so which one do you think is the correct explanation so uh, in many books or in lower classes you have studied that this is the uh, reason why lift is created but this is actually not the correct answer this is a false assumption is made there so i will tell you what the false assumption is so here the actually actual reason is the newton third law of motion third law explains the down wash of air particle explains why lift is produced so let me tell you uh, what the uh, assumption wrong assumption here in the bernoulli's equation so remember in bernoulli's equation i told you that the air particle at the top surface and the bottom surface would meet at the end at the same time right remember that uh, it should the top surface and the bottom surface air particle meet at the same time and since the top surface air particle is moving a larger distance covering a larger distance therefore it must have to speed up right and uh, while speeding up velocity increases and pressure decreases the reverse thing happens here so this assumption itself is wrong let me show you how so this was an experiment done by cambridge university professor i will link the original video in the description down below 
so uh, let's see so here it moves in a straight line when it interacts this one is moving ahead and this one is lagging behind and note that here it does not meet see it again moving straight it moves ahead this one is lagging behind and at the end they do not meet see they do not meet so the equal time argument which was told before does not stay fit and if the equal time argument does not stay fit you cannot argue that uh, since it's covering a larger distance it must have to speed up and uh, while speeding up the pressure decreases so that argument uh, gets completely wrong here okay so uh, that is not the correct answer but still bernoulli's equation is one of the very powerful tool in fluid flow motion so let us look about how bernoulli's is actually implemented okay so this is bernoulli's equation and uh, as i told you before bernoulli's equation can be applied only along a streamline this is a streamline you could apply the bernoulli's equation at this point and at this point but you cannot apply the bernoulli equation at one streamline point here and other streamline point here you cannot say that this air for this air particle the p plus half rho v square here is equal to p plus rho half rho square here this is not true you can only apply for one equation one streamline only uh, all right so uh, as we have told before that for our purposes the delta h is not very much uh, so this we neglect this is neglected so this is what we are remaining with p plus half rho v square and this is equal to a constant so this thing this is called as a static pressure the static pressure or the pressure exerted without any motion because of the uh, this is called as static pressure and the there is also one more pressure because of the flow as the fluid is flowing the very flow of air particles creates a pressure and this pressure is represented by the dynamic pressure this is called as half rho v square this is called dynamic pressure and the summation of these two is a constant and this constant is referred as the stagnation pressure this is called as the stagnation pressure okay so while deriving the bernoulli equation there are few assumptions are made it states that the flow is steady laminar and inviscid so uh, what is a steady flow steady flow means that it remains invariant with time it, with time it does not changes right so if the flow is uh, is such flow is such in at t equals to 0 second it should not become like this at t is equals to 10 second so it should remain like this forever it is invariant with time what is laminar flow laminar flow is very simple it's a straight ordered flow without any mixing of air flow so if a if a air particle is along moving along a streamline it would never mix with another streamline the opposite of laminar flow is called turbulent flow where rapid mixing of uh, air particles takes place so this streamline mixes with one another and that is called as a turbulent flow. and next is inviscid so i told you before that uh, the viscous effects are neglected here along with uh, steady there is also one type of flow which is called uniform flow so uh, as steady is invariant with time uniform means invariant with position so every place it remains same is called uniform flow all right so now let us look at the actual answer why uh, the lift is produces in a air force so that is given by the newton's third law of motion this is the downwash of air particles Uh, one very important effect which uh, accompanies this is called as a quanda effect what does this quanda effect states that uh, initially the air particle is moving in a straight line straight line and if a curved path or a curved surface is introduced to the air stream the air stream would curve and follow the curvature of the surface this would bend and follow the curvature of the surface this is what quanda effect says it was moving initially in the straight line initially in a straight line but with the introduction of this surface this thing would bend down and move in this direction so why does this happen so initially let us assume that this was moving in a straight line so what happens is that this air particles here would try to join that flow or it would get dragged along with that flow so uh, here air particles are getting dragged along here that creates a region where there is little air particle so that creates a low pressure region here the outside is ambient pressure and that ambient pressure pushes the air stream to bend along this curvature and that's why it this bends and follows the curvature 
okay now that we have seen that the air particle is moving in a curved line moving in a curved line so uh, as you know that every curve is a part of a circle right so uh, if this moving in a curvy linear or circular motion what is absolutely needed is an yes it's right that any time you move in a curve you always need a centripetal acceleration and where is the centripetal acceleration directed at towards the radius of the circle so the centripetal acceleration is always needed if the centripetal acceleration is like this towards the radius so the force must also be to be in this direction only right towards the center and if the force is in this direction the pressure difference the pressure difference or pressure differential must also be be in this direction that means that this p out here is higher is at a higher pressure than this p in that creates a pressure differential and that gives the centripetal acceleration so this is the case so uh, how what we infer from this is that the convex side of the streamline this is the convex side is always at a higher pressure than the concave side this is the convex side convex side is always at a higher pressure than the concave side this is what we infer from the coan diagram any any time a streamline is moving in this curved shape the outer region or the convex region is at a higher pressure than at the convex side concave side uh, so to test this there are a few uh, basic experiments which you could do at your home also uh, so this experiment has take a small strip of paper uh, small uh, thin strip of paper hold it with your hand at one side let it droop let this thing droop and uh, blow air tangentially to the air uh, to the air paper strip blow air tangentially to the air strip what you will see is that this thing rose up and it remains straight so why does this happen as you are blowing air this air particle will get dragged along with that flow and this creates a low pressure region here and ambient region will push the paper strip straight also one thing which you can do is take a spoon and at the bottom side bottom side of the uh, spoon just place it touching to a air water stream just open your tap and let the water flow put the spoon very close to it the bottom side of the spoon very close to it you will see that this is get uh, the spoon is getting pulled along the air stream this thing is also uh, shown in this gif also you can see that uh, the, this person is trying to pull the ball ping pong ball but still it remains attached to the this air stream so that proves the quant diagram that is a simple experiment of quant diagram you can do this with your spoon also and you will get simple uh, force also you will get the same force okay so uh, how does this explains the lift so in this uh, GIF, as you can see, that this also the air particle are moving in a curved shape. In a curved shape. So uh, if we take that these air particles, which are uh, at a far farther distance from this airfoil, it is not very much affected by the shape of this airfoil. Here you can see that the uh, streamline is distorted here and here. But at far away distance, the streamline is not affected, and that uh, that uh, streamline we call free stream condition. So the at free stream condition, the condition is atmospheric, right? So uh, at this distance and this distance, the pressure is atmospheric pressure. Here you can see that this is moving in a curved region, and as we have seen, when uh, particle moves in a curved region, the convex side of it is at a higher pressure. So this is the convex side, and this this side, the top side is at an atmospheric pressure. So as this thing moves in a curve this side is at a higher pressure and this side is at a lower pressure right? so if this region is atmospheric pressure this region must have to be lower than atmospheric pressure right uh, to maintain that uh, curve flow and also see in this region the convex side is this side this is the convex side and this is the concave side so at this convex side you can see that this is the ambient air pressure pressure here is ambient so this side the pressure has to be higher because this is a convex side this is a convex side higher pressure this is concave side low pressure and as this pressure is ambient pressure this has to be higher than ambient pressure or high pressure region here so high pressure region here low pressure region here this difference pressure creates a lift right so now you have the answer why an airfoil shape creates the lift which are required for 
any kind of light. So uh, let's meet at the next session.